Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Bean, and today I'm coming at you with a book haul and unboxing. So, I think I got everything. I'm not positive that I got everything, but I think I got everything. I, I have no idea, honestly. I, I don't know. I probably am missing a whole bunch of books that I got recently, and I apologize to those books, but apparently I, I have memory problems, which no one is surprised by this. I have ADHD, and ADHD means I can't remember 10 seconds ago. Wait. So we're going to start off with books that I like picked up at Barnes and Noble, or and then we're going to go into book boxes, and then I have one package from Amazon, and then I have a book box that needs to be unboxed. So it's going to be a slightly longer video, so grab a coffee, grab a drink, grab something, and let's get started, shall we? I can tell you right now I'm still probably missing at least one. I don't know. I'm not sure. These are like the past probably two or three months. All right, let's start with a book that I got off of Amazon, actually. And the first book in this book haul is A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking by T. Kingfisher. This is a book from, I think, 2021. It did win an award in 2021. This is... This sounds like a kind of like a humorous fantasy story. It basically... Um, follows a wizard who loves to bake. Like, baking is her thing. She, her familiar is a sourdough starter, which if you don't know what that is, it's something, it, it grows in your fridge until you're ready to make the sourdough, until it's ready. You do have to feed it and everything. So it kind of, it's alive. Yeah. Um, but basically she finds a dead body on the floor of the bakery and she has to figure out what happened before she gets blamed for it. I think this sounds really cute. It's just honestly, this is going to be a super quick read. So much fun. I'm super excited for it. Next book I picked up that I don't think I hauled this one. If I did, sorry, not sorry. I'm excited. Um, I got The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy by Megan Bannon. This is a romance that the person at Barnes & Noble basically said, if you want a fun romance that's not super, like, smutty and not, like, overly too much, but is fun and whimsical and unique, pick this one. And I said, say no more. It's got Undertakers, and I think the other person is... Marshall, yeah, a Marshall and an Undertaker, and I snatched it off the shelf, because, yes. It is a chonkier book than I thought it was, but I'm still really excited for it. Next book I got is When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill. This is a book that has been on my radar for a very long time. Um, this basically tells a time that's basically a lot like ours, except for in 1955, yeah, 1955, hundreds of thousands of women sprouted wings, scales, and talons, and took to the sky. They just turned into dragons. So it's all about what happened after that. So I'm intrigued. It's got a dragon on the cover, which I think is really cool. And I'm very excited. This has gotten really good reviews from what I've seen. So I'm very excited. Next book I picked up. I picked up kind of because I'm in a bit of been in a bit of a thriller horror mood lately. The spooky season has hit me a bit early. And I picked up The Housemaid by Frieda McFadden. I've been recommended Frieda McFadden's work before, um, but this is the big one of hers right now. I think I have another one of hers upstairs as the library book. I think The Inmate is hers as well. Um, I haven't read it yet. So this one is about a girl who gets a job as a housemaid for this very rich family and kind of discovers some of their secrets. The premise of this book honestly reminds me of the movie Knives Out, so I actually really, really enjoyed that movie, so I'm looking forward to getting something similar, hopefully. We'll see. Maybe not, but I'm still excited. I read the first chapter of this out of curiosity, and I am intrigued. I will say that I am intrigued. Next, we're going to go into my more recent book haul that I got. Uh, so I picked up six books in this haul, and the first one I picked up is How to Kill Men and Get Away With It by Katie Brent. I did scare John when I picked up this book. Uh, but this is basically the easiest way to summarize this book is to read the back. Meet Kitty Collins. Friend, lover, killer. He was following me. That guy from the nightclub who wouldn't leave me alone. I hadn't intended to kill him, of course, but I wasn't sorry when I did. And despite the mess I made, I appeared to get away with it. That's where my addiction started. 
I've got a taste for revenge, and frank and quite frankly, I'm killing it. I think this sounds fun, sounds interesting, sounds a little bit different. And this cover, guys, like, she's got blood on her shoes. How cool. Like, I just love the detailing in this cover. I, it's so good. So, I'm excited. I do plan on reading this soon. Next book I got is The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels by India Holton. This is the first book in the series. I accidentally picked up the second one thinking it was the first one. And this is the first one. I did check. I hope I'm not wrong on that. Uh, but this is a prim and proper lady thief must save her aunt from a crazed pirate and his dangerously charming henchman in this fantastical historical romance. I'm hit and miss with historical romance, it seems, but there's pirates and lady scoundrels. I'm excited. Next book I have is Alias Emma by Ava Glass. This is a book that basically reminded me of a combination of James Bond and Jason Bourne, but a newly minted secret agent fresh out of school is basically tasked with protecting this prince and getting him across the UK without being seen by any security cameras. They have no phones, they have no bank cards, anything like that, and she needs to get him there in a time frame. It's 12 hours. They have 12 hours to make it to safety. I think this sounds so fast paced. I haven't read it yet. It's tiny and this will not take me long. I do plan on reading it in September. I was hoping to read it in October and then I went on a horror kick and I I didn't or a thriller kick and I didn't but this would be right up my alley right now so I am hopefully going to be reading this very soon. Next book I have is The Swell by Allie Reynolds. This is going to be an interesting one. I'm very intrigued by this premise but it's um, the short summary of this. Cut off from the rest of the world, a group of elite surfers are determined to find the perfect waves at any cost, even murder. This follows a girl who has sworn off surfing after an accident with her ex-boyfriend. Well, now ex-boyfriend. He has passed away, unfortunately. Um, but then her best friend announces an engagement to someone who's on this elite surfing team and they all go to an island off Australia, an island off Australia um, in order to catch like these amazingly big waves or something. And so, yeah, like they're willing to kill each other for weight. I'm so intrigued by this concept. Like I really, really am. So I'm here for it. This is on my TBR for the, um, the, the readathon that I'm doing starting in to the day this goes up, actually. Ooh, I should decide what I'm reading. I think I actually have. Someone give me a recommendation. I'm going to stick with it. So, yes. But this is on that. I am very intrigued by this, mostly just because it sounds so different from anything I've read. I've never read a surfing thriller. Next one I have is Love in the Time of Serial Killers by Alicia Thompson. This is basically the story, from what I understand, about a woman who is obsessed with true crime podcasts. Can't sympathize. And she basically has to get out of the mindset of anyone out there is getting ready to kill me and give someone a second chance, or give someone a chance at love and at romance. So I think what I've heard is that this is great if you are a fan of um, true crime, and I am, so I'm curious to see how it goes. Yeah. Next book that I have, or well, last one for this part of the haul is going to be A Death in Door County by Annalise Ryan. This is the first book in a new series that follows someone who, uh, who hmm, that follows a cryptozoologist, which if you don't know what a cryptozoologist is, it's someone who studies cryptology, which is the study of cryptoids, which is basically the study of, um, tall tale legends so like the loch ness monster bigfoot mothman uh jersey devil those kind of creatures uh would be what is studied in cryptozoology so i think this is gonna be great and it's basically um a a, a bookstore a bookstore owner and cryptozoologist is asked to weigh in on a murder that happens that just might be proof that there's a fabled lake monster up in Door County. So. All right, the next two books I'm going to get into are the books that I got in my actual my first two Twisted Retreat boxes. 
which you, pro you guys have probably seen the preview f or the videos for those unboxings. So you can always skip past this part if you want to. There's just two books though. The first book that I got from Twisted Retreat was No Gods, No Monsters by Cadwell Turnbull. Um, and this is the story of monsters literally coming out of hiding. Humans thinking that it's some sort of stand, it's some racial thing, it's some political thing, but it turns out that these monsters have been among us all the time and what is it that is causing them to come out of hiding now we don't know so i think it sounds very intriguing very different um it's also just beautiful so i'm very excited to get into this and i really like this cover too it's so pretty the next book that i got from twisted retreat is holy ghost road by john mantooth this is a demon story about a girl who finds her priest i believe in her family's barn worshiping a demon and she basically has to take off down the road she has no car no phone nothing to try and find her grandmother who is the only person she now trusts and the entire time this demon is following her and trying to hunt her down so i'm intrigued it looks super creepy i don't know i'm intrigued i think it'll be fun so we'll see this is again a little bit out of my comfort zone. I've never read one of these before, so I'm very intrigued. I haven't read like a demon story, I guess. I mean, I've read demon romance. That's different. That's a whole other can of worms I'm not going to open right now. Nope. But I also got um, a couple others from Book of the Month, so I'm going to go through these three. Uh, this one I have first is The, o the Only One Left by Riley Sager. I actually just DNF'd a Riley Sager book, so we'll see. I think this is like a, you have to stay in the haunted house overnight in order to get a fortune kind of thing, which honestly reminds me of a Scooby-Doo episode from when I was a kid, but that's not, the, that, that's not here nor there. But yeah, so we'll see. Maybe this one will be better. I do like the haunted house ones, but I didn't like the one that I read last. So we'll see. The next one I got is Dark Corners. And this is technically, I believe, a sequel. It is, I don't, what is it a sequel to though? The Night Swim. Uh, this is technically like um, a sequel to an earlier book from, of hers from years ago called The Night Swim, which I did read and I did really enjoy, but it follows a true crime podcaster who ends up solving a murder. Um, Night Swim was really good, really well done, um, and did have me on the edge of my seat. It's been a while since I've read it though, but it's it has it's been a couple e <clears throat> it's been a couple years since that one came out. So I'm curious to see if I am going to need to reread that one in order to read this one. I'm hoping not because it's a whole different mystery, so it should be good. But we'll see. And the last one I'm going to talk about today is Vampires of El Norte by Isabel Cañas. I talk about this book a lot in the past couple videos, I feel like, or maybe just the last one. Um, but this is Vampires Meets Vaqueros, which is a cowboy term, uh, in 18, 1840s Mexico. Yep. That's what I know about it. And that's all I need to know about it, and I'm very excited. All right, so for this next part, I have a package from Amazon, and we're gonna open it. I know what books are in here. I'm still really excited, and I wanted to share them with you. And I don't do any like these kinds of unboxings on this channel, so I kind of wanted to. So, oh shit! Ready? Me, <laughs> I love doing that. All right, so there's two books in here. The first one is less exciting for all of you. But it is Archives, Principles and Practices, the second edition by Laura A. Miller. This is one of my school books for grad school. This is book number four for my two classes. Yeah, so I'm studying archives this semester. Woohoo! I do want to be an archivist, so it works. Like, legitimately work in archives for a city or something. And this next one, okay, this next one... I'm so excited about this. I'm so excited. Can you tell what it is? Can you tell what it is? <laughs> so I follow this author on TikTok and she is one of the cutest people in the world. The sweetest, cutest people ever. I'm so excited for this book. I may just have to drop everything and read it this weekend. 
Guys, I got it. I have Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Mayer. I hope I said your name right. I'm really sorry. This, it just sounds so adorable, but this is basically about a woman who gets hired as the assistant to a villain. Literally, it is what the title says. Um, I'm so excited, and she has hyped this up in my head. I don't know the general plot of it. That is what I know about it. That is all I want to know about it. I want the cuteness that I have been promised in this book, and I'm so excited about it. I cannot explain to you just how excited it is. I am for this. Also, since I'm filming this, technically, happy book birth, happy publishing birthday to this book. I'm so proud of you. It's, it's just so exciting, and it really gives me hope of getting published someday. It really does. So I'm so excited about this book. I have an unplugged box. Now, I did unsubs- I, I am no longer subscribed to Unplugged. I need a sharp thing. I have a sharp thing. Um, I switched because I'm only really able to afford, um, like, one major book box other than Book of the Month per month right now just because we have other expenses. But I ended up being chosen, and I, I actually won a free box on Instagram. So this is the box that I got. I was hoping to have my Twisted Retreat box, but they had they had a whole bunch of delays, unfortunately. They were very upfront, and we know everything about that. Um, but I, I got this box, so I figured I'd do, I'd do a throwback, and I'll do an unboxing. I literally just cut it open, so let's see what I got from Unplugged. This is their August box. Oh, and the... The book is right on top. All right. Well, I forgot what they do for this box. Is they do, they do a digital um, thing. So let me get that up quick. Their monthly spoilers come on a, um, a scan. I'm having troubles today. Words are escaping me today, like very badly. I'm really bad with words, so I apologize ahead of time. Um, this is August adult box. Well, I, you saw the book, but I'm going to put it aside and I'm going to do a different one. Also, the cover they have on here does not match the cover I have. Wait. Oh! Oh, I forgot. This box has two books. Oh my gosh. Hmm. So it has... The month's exclusive book, and then a prequel. Okay, that's actually really cool. Sweet! All right, but let's start. Let's start, because I got a glimpse of the other things in here, and I'm very excited. So we're going to put the books... Book? Only one book is on top. Okay. All right. Oh, oh I mean... Okay, that's cute. It's a food container. We use these... Oh, there's things in it! There's something in it! I'll get to the thing in it in a second. So this, it looks like Night Circus, is it? The Night Circus food container was designed by L-Y underscore Rary, library, <laughs> uh, for this box. It is inspired by the Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. This is the top. So look how pretty that is. It says, the finest of pleasures are always the unexpected ones. Very true, and it is a clock and the circus tent, so... Oh, and they're sealed. Oh, these are nice ones. We like these. This is glass. All right. Oh, there's things in here. Oh, 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 there's a couple things in here. All right. Let's start. I, I need surfaces to put things on. What is this? Oh, a Mortish. Oh, all right. We've got Mortish's Face Serum. Oh, it's a celiac, uh, hmm. Oh, it's a cyclic acid syndrome, or er, syndrome, serum. So this is what it looks like. It's, it is encased. It says, life's not all lovely thorns and singing vultures, you know. I miss the Adams family. I really do. So I have gotten a vitamin C serum from them, and I used it, and it was, worked very nicely for me, at least. Um, so their stuff has worked for me in the past. I don't know that I've used the... Oh, it's pink. Look at that. It is pink, guys. It is pink. Um... But here we go. This is what it looks like. It's got the little popper on top. There we go. This is the thing I do love about about Unplugged. This is stuff that I use, so I do appreciate that. 
All right, so that's that. Um. Oh no, you fell out. Don't do that. Next thing we have in there was we have a bookmark. So let me take it on, take it out. I feel so disorganized whenever I do unboxing videos because I never know what I'm expecting. Okay. Ooh. Damelo, porfas. Damn, oh my goodness. Why is this so difficult? All right, there it is. Look at this cute bookmark. It is a metal bookmark. It is gold on the back. Um, but it is just, it's a book stack. It's uh, designed by Azura Arts for this box. I love it. I will use this all the time. I love it so much. All right, you chill there. I'm not going to put the container up here because I don't think it'll balance. There's also the two signed book plates in that box. So that's good to know. And then we've got a... There's a face mask. Ooh. We like we like face masks. I use face masks quite a bit. And these are, it starts with, with this. So it starts with us, I'm guessing. Yeah, it starts with us face mask. Um, this is the cover. I don't really read Colleen Hoover, I'm not going to lie. Um, this is from Bath Apothecary. So I'm very, this will be very good quality. This will work really nicely. I'm very excited about this. I didn't read... It starts with this. I just haven't. But. All right, and then let me open up the two books that are in this box because there's two of them. This first one is the book of the month. Um, so the book of the month is Reset by Serena Dalan. And the tagline says, can you love someone you don't remember? Interesting. We'll start with the sprayed edges. So here's what the edges look like. It's the, like the fast forward button is what it looks like, honestly, to me. So that's really cool. Then we'll take off the dust jacket. Ooh, end pages, end pages. I see pretty end pages. There's the pretty end pages. I think I'm, yep, there's end pages. And usually, yeah, the back ones are the same. But then my favorite part of the books from this company are under the dust jackets. These books are gorgeous. This one's pink. It says reset. It's hard because they're holographic. It's hard to get it on camera really well. Okay. And then here's the spine, which again is hard for me to really show you because it's gold on pink. There you go. And then the back has a quote on it, which I will end I will read in a second. And it says, with the mind a blank slate, everyone has the freedom to author their own soul. Ooh. All right, let's see what it's about. So it looks like the original cover was blue and then had a white background. So this um, crane that you see here, see here was actually blue and then all this purple was white. So I do like this cover change. I like blue a lot. But I really like this purple. I think it's super pretty. All right, here we're gonna we're gonna read this one now. Uh, can you love someone you don't remember? After the last war destroyed most of the world, survivors from form a new society in four self-sustaining cities in the Moave Desert. In the Mo Moave Desert. Wow, words are hard today. In the utopia of the four cities. Inspired by the lyrics of Imagine and Buddhist philosophy, everything is carefully planned and controlled. The seasons, the weather, and the residents. To prevent mankind from destroying each other again, its citizens undergo a memory wipe every four years in a process called tabula rasa, a blank slate, to remove learned prejudices. With each new cycle, they begin again with new names, jobs, homes, and lives. No memories, no attachments, no wars. Eris, a scientist who shuns love, embraces tabula rasa and the excitement of unknown futures. Walling herself off from emotional attachments, she sees relationships as pointless and avoids deep connections. But she is haunted by a recurring dream that becomes more frequent and vivid as time passes. After meeting Benja, a handsome, free-spirited writer who believes his dreams of a past lover are memories, her world is turned upside down. Obsessed with finding the Dreamers, a secret organization thought to have a way to recover member memories, Benja draws her down a dangerous path towards the past. When Matisse, 
the leader of the dreamers, appears in Eris' life, everything she believes falls to pieces. With little time left before the next tabula rasa, they begin a bittersweet romance, navigating love in a world where names, lives, and, mo and moments are systematically destroyed. Thought-provoking and emotionally resonant, re Reset will make you consider the haunting reality of love and loss and the indelible marks they leave behind. Wow. Okay. Okay, you have my attention. That's fascinating. I love that concept. Okay, that... Oh. Huh. All right. I really hope that this one isn't going to be... Spoiler? But the other book... Hold on, let me get it out first. The first book, the prequel, is called Preset, and it is this gorgeous lime green color. Um, the sprayed edges are dark green and, like, orange almost, which for some reason this is giving me stray vibes, like the video game. The back is a bunch of thoughts on it. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Talk about a pretty book. And pages look like this um, on both sides, so it's uh, flowers. And under the dust jacket, we have a tree, which I'm sure is going to have some sort of significance in our story. Then we have the spine preset. And the back, can you give up a love you can't forget? Guys, oh my goodness. And these do come with um, signed book plates that I have that um, I found. They're in the other, uh, they were in the bin. So I'm going to read the summary now. And if it ends up be, being at all spoilery, oh no, it should be fine. No, it should be fine. Okay. This is the prequel. Okay. If you don't want to hear the summary of it, I get it, and you can skip ahead to the end of the video. Wait until this book disappears, basically. Or I put it up here. <sighs> can you give up a love you can't forget? After the last war destroyed most of the world, survivors formed a new society in four self-sustaining cities in the Moave Desert. To halt extinction, everything in the four cities is carefully predicted and carefully controlled. Even love. But how can you control love and freedom? In the engrossing prequel to Reset, Preset weaves the tales of Eleanor, the Crone, and Eli, the Planner, before and after the creation of the Four Cities. Much has changed in the world and their relationship, but there are some truths that have yet to come to light. Fighting for change yet still loving her husband Eli, the scientist Eleonora, Eleanor travels to Alara, the lone city resi resisting fully bending to Eli's control. There she must separate reality from lives, from lies, memories from desires, as she tries to piece together the truth about what's happening in the four cities. But the gulf between love and freedom, between the past and the now, between what we remember and what we strive to become can be as vast as the break between two hearts bound together. It is here in the dark fissure left by loss where Eleanor discovers the true cost that has been paid to save humanity. Okay, I'm sold on this series. I would like to read them now, please. Oh my gosh. That's... That's intense. Also, can I just... How pretty do these two books look next to each other? Like, they just look gorgeous next to each other. I cannot get over that. Alright. Okay. I could get over it. I don't want to get over it. I'm sorry. You guys gotta move over a bit. And then I got two book plates right here, like I said. And then this really cool container that is glass. So this was the haul from this book box. Not shabby at all. Not bad at all. I really liked this box, actually. And the, the two books thing, I'm sold. I'm so sold on that. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Oh. But I think, other than the books, my favorite item is going to have to be the bookmark. I think it's so cute. I love it. 
with this is a very close second because it's a usable item. It is something that will get almost daily use for us because we pack our own lunches for work. Um, so I will definitely be using this a lot. For sure. I'm so excited, guys. But that's my book haul. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. Please go ahead. Do that. Do the thing. Do the things, please. And I really hope you enjoyed this. I haven't done a book haul in such a long time that this feels very foreign to me and I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with my hands. I don't know. Hopefully this worked for you guys. I hope it did. And until next time, guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep reading. Bye!